got my coffee ready, so we are ready to film this video. What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so today is a very exciting video because we are going to be talking about what to do if you are waitlisted at your college. So being that it's March right now, you are probably hearing back from colleges that you applied to whether you were accepted, waitlisted, or sadly rejected. So today we are talking about the waitlist though because I do have experience getting waitlisted to colleges back in the day when I was applying to schools. And so also, if you are waitlisted specifically to UC Berkeley, I have a UC Berkeley waitlist video that I will also have linked down below. But if you're new here, hello, my name is Rachel. I just recently graduated from UC Berkeley in May 2020, where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies, and now I'm working full-time at a law firm. And so if you are a student applying to colleges this year or have a friend or sibling applying to colleges, Colleges this year, you should definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting. It's a team of myself and other UC Berkeley students where we specialize in reviewing college application essays as well as consulting one on one with students and parents. So, without further ado, let's get on with this video. So, if you got waitlisted to any colleges, the first thing that you want to think about and decide is whether you want to accept or reject the waitlist offer. So for me, I was waitlisted to a few colleges. Usually when you are waitlisted, the college gives you the option of whether you want to accept the waitlist or reject the waitlist. So basically the first step at this time, you need to really think about do you like this college enough to put yourself on the waitlist? But if you don't really see yourself attending that college, even if you got off of the waitlist, maybe you reject the waitlist offer and then remove yourself from the applicant pool to give other students a chance of getting getting off of the waitlist and they can accept their offers. So really take time to think about this, do some extra research, talk to current students at the college, look at YouTube videos of current students at the college, check out their Reddit or Facebook pages to really see could you envision yourself at this college if you got off of the waitlist. If you got off of the waitlist and you would definitely attend that college, then you should accept the waitlist offer. Like I said, I was waitlisted at a few schools. For me, I chose to accept the waitlist for UC Berkeley actually, and for Harvard, but then I rejected the waitlist offers for schools like UChicago and UVA. Because personally, like I said, you do that extra research, and I couldn't really envision myself at those universities after looking it over again, thinking about price and everything like that. When you are thinking about accepting or rejecting the waitlist, something else to think about is if you are on the waitlist and you do get accepted, are you disadvantaged versus students who got in the regular applicant pool? So maybe at the university, if you get off of the waitlist, maybe you get less housing options, maybe you get to pick classes later, so then you get less class options, like class times, class sections, because the classes have already filled up. So that's something to research and to think about if you might get disadvantaged because you are on the waitlist. So the second thing that you need to do is to commit to another college. So with waitlist offers, after the national deadline to commit to a college, then the universities will look at their incoming class who accepted their offers of admission and then they'll fill in those extra spaces with people off of the waitlist. So you would get off of the waitlist after that deadline to commit to a college, so you shouldn't really commit to zero colleges and then bank on getting off of the waitlist for a college, so you should commit to a college by that deadline, which would be before you hear back from your waitlist schools. So like for me, I actually committed to the University of Maryland in their honors college, and I had a pretty good scholarship to go there, and obviously, you know, in-state tuition, that's always a big plus. So with the college that you end up committing to, you need to get excited about that college. So go to a student tour, go to one of their admitted students days, stuff like that. 
if they're doing virtual events for admitted students, attend those. With being on college waitlist, you don't really know if you're going to get off of the waitlist or not, so when you commit to a school, you have to really like it because you don't know if you would get off of the waitlist for those other schools. With this, when you commit to a school, you probably have to pay some kind of deposit or down payment fees, and if you end up getting off of the waitlist for a school and switching colleges, you probably don't get that money back. So that's definitely something to think about because it could be like $400, $500, to a couple thousand dollars that you have to pay in order to commit to a school. And obviously only commit to one school. I know people from college who were indecisive and they paid that down payment and they actually committed to like two schools because they couldn't make a choice about which one they wanted to attend more. So like obviously don't do that because then you're just losing money and probably it will cause you problems in the future because you can't attend two colleges at once. The next thing to do is to write a letter of continued interest, also known as a LOCI. First, you want to figure out, does the college that you accepted the waitlist offer for allow you to submit a supplemental essay, the letter of continued interest, if they don't want any extra materials from you, so they don't want a letter of continued interest, don't write one, that's a really, really big thing. If the university says, no, your application is finished, we don't want any more information, information, don't submit more information because then you're not following the directions. So if the college does let you write a letter of continued interest, I highly recommend you write one because as the title of the essay says, letter of continued interest, it can really help you show the university that you are still interested in that university and attending that university even though you're on the wait list. So I wrote these extra essays for UC Berkeley and for Harvard and submitted them. These are shorter essays than your usual college application essays, like a one-page letter, sort of like a cover letter. It's basically to help you highlight yourself more, to tell the university if you were accepted off of the waitlist, you would 100% attend that university. You can highlight yourself if you've won any new awards, you started any new passion projects, you're in sports and you won a sports championship, you're in a club and you just won something, stuff like that that didn't maybe happen yet in your main application in the last few months. For me, in my letters of continued interest, I wrote about being the student member of my county's board of education because when I was applying to colleges, I just started that position. I was just elected into that position, so I couldn't really write about my experiences in that position in a college application essay yet because I just started out in that position. So by the time March rolled around, my one-year term in this position was almost over, so then I had experiences voting on the Board of Ed, and so I wrote about those experiences in my letter of continued interest. You would basically highlight yourself in ways that aren't really present in your application already. You don't really want to repeat the stuff that's already in your application because they've already read those materials. And so let me know if you wanted a whole video on these letters of continued interest, and I can definitely do a video on that. Big thing that you need to do if you are waitlisted is to keep your grades up. This is not the time to get senioritis or to start slacking in your classes. Even if you're accepted to your dream college, you don't want to start slacking at the end of your senior year because chances are whether you're accepted or waitlisted, you will have to send your entire senior year transcript and grades to the college that you end up going to. So if you're usually like an A or a B student and then the last quarter of your senior year, you start to fail all of your classes, that's not good and you could have your offer rescinded you could also maybe lose scholarships because your grades have fallen, so don't get senioritis even if it is super enticing to start slacking in your classes because it's almost summertime, it's the end of the year, you're about to go to college, but truly keep up the hard work in your classes and don't get lazy. And so if you've liked these tips so far, definitely give this video a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. So those are the things that you should do if you are waitlisted to colleges. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about things that you should not do if you are waitlisted to colleges. If the college specifically says if you're waitlisted, don't send us anything, 
do not send them any other materials. Additionally, you should not be calling the admissions office every single day saying like, hey, I'm on the wait list. How do I get off of the wait list? What are my chances? X, Y, Z, because that's probably sort of annoying for the admissions office to keep getting those calls, especially if you're calling every single day. If you wanted to call once to ask questions, that's totally fine. Just don't call them every day with the same exact thing. So the final thing that you should not do if you are waitlisted to college is post inappropriate things online. And honestly, that tip goes for any colleges that you are accepted to also because you could get rejected from the college that you're accepted to and if you're waitlisted and a college sees that you're posting these inappropriate things online, then maybe they'll reject you also. But also, you should not be doxing yourself online. I was reading on the law school admissions Reddit, basically the admissions officers for law schools actually peruse the Reddit pages sometimes, so if you're posting online all of your stats and information, that really makes it easy for an admissions officer to figure out who you are. You probably shouldn't do that, especially if your online posts, you're saying, oh, I didn't really want to go to that college anyway, but I stayed on their waitlist because I just want to get accepted in order to reject them later on. Like admissions officers may see that and be able to figure out who you are, and then they might reject you because they saw you say you didn't want to attend that college anyway. I would recommend you not posting those kinds of things online. And so yeah, those are my tips on what you should do if you're waitlisted to a college and some things that you shouldn't do if you're waitlisted to a college. So definitely let me know if you had any questions down below. As always, definitely give this video a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And I post every single Sunday and Wednesday, so check back on my channel then. But thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.